The Nintendo Switch launched on March 7, 2017, to critical and commercial success. But while the Switch soared Nintendo's profits and shares to record numbers, a hidden problem lurked under the surface – Joy-Con drift. In this video, we'll be looking at why Joy-Con drift happens, the ongoing legal troubles and the fallout from the issue itself, and Nintendo's response. But before we jump in, we'd like to remind everyone that Nintendo has often prided itself on its durable hardware. Before the DS released, Nintendo tested the system's hinges hundreds of times to ensure it could survive a lot of usage. They even dropped the DS from several stores to study how it might better survive a fall. At their dedicated store in New York, Nintendo even proudly displayed a Game Boy that survived a bombing in the Gulf War. This is partly why fans are surprised to see the lack of care put into the Joy-Con hardware, which is fragile compared to Nintendo's other devices. Even the Wii U was extremely durable, having an unusually tough touchscreen for the time. But before the Switch had even released, users were having issues due to faulty hardware. On February 22, 2017, reporters who got to review copies of the Switch started to experience weird syncing issues, mostly with the left Joy-Con. The syncing issue was caused by the left Joy-Con Bluetooth signal being disrupted by the player's hand or other wireless devices. Nintendo first responded to these reports with the following statement to Polygon. We have received some reports and are looking into it. As with all Nintendo video game systems, we will continue to monitor the performance of Nintendo Switch hardware and software, and make improvements when necessary. For help with any hardware or software-related questions, visit support.nintendo.com. On their support page, Nintendo recommended players shouldn't place their Switch docks behind a TV or near an aquarium, as this could cause wireless interference. They also recommended keeping the Switch and Joy-Cons away from wireless devices, wires, and cords. Nintendo initially stated that cell phones might interfere with the Switch as well, but later removed them from the list. Two weeks after the Switch launched, Nintendo confirmed these issues were caused by a manufacturing variant, and they'd let users experiencing the problem have their Joy-Cons repaired for free. Despite Nintendo offering free repairs and somewhat addressing the manufacturing issues, there still seems to be many users having syncing issues with the left Joy-Con. Years later, online tutorials for fixing the problem are still being made and getting hundreds of thousands of views. A popular solution was inserting a small piece of conductive foam to help resolve the weak wireless signal from the left Joy-Con. The weak signal was just the first of many issues with the Joy-Con, however. After the Switch released, players noticed that inputs weren't being registered by their games. Characters would move on their own in a single direction, and players had difficulty registering new inputs. This phenomenon would later be called Joy-Con drift, and has since been experienced by a large chunk of the Switch user base. While this is by no means scientific, a tweet by our own Push Dustin asking people to retweet if they'd been impacted by Joy-Con drift got over 30,000 retweets on Twitter. As far as we can tell, there seems to be two potential causes for Joy-Con drift. Firstly, dust getting its way into the controller and underneath the rubber cap may be a cause. The rubber cap is designed to keep the interior clean, but sometimes particles can still make their way through. Another possible cause is the contacts used by the controller to register joystick movements become completely worn down over time. In order to fix this, Nintendo generally recommends recalibrating the analog sticks in the Switch's menu. If this doesn't work, they recommend users send in their Joy-Cons for repairs, which depending on your region and if you're under warranty or not, could be quite costly. In some cases, it's cheaper for players to just buy a new Joy-Con instead of repairing it. Many users have tried using compressed air or isopropyl alcohol to fix the Joy-Con drift. Others have tried taking the Joy-Con fully apart, with Joy-Con repair kits having over a thousand reviews on Amazon Japan. And on Amazon.com, there's even a replacement kit with over 7,500 reviews. If you consider the fact that only around 1 in 10 Amazon on users leave reviews, this particular kit alone has potentially sold around 750,000 units. This is a staggering number considering that some variants of official Joy-Cons have fewer reviews than the repair kit. In 2019, Nintendo released a revised console called the Switch Lite. This undockable device had the Joy-Cons built into the console. When this variant was announced, many fans hoped Nintendo would fully resolve Joy-Con drift, as the Lite's Joy-Cons were built into the system. Unfortunately, shortly after the variant was released, reports came out that the light could also get drift. This was a huge inconvenience 
inconvenience to light owners, as they'd have to send their whole console to Nintendo for repairs if their device got the drift. In addition, due to shipping regulations, only four Joy-Con controllers can be sent in a single repair form. The COVID-19 pandemic also impacted Nintendo's ability to timely repair Joy-Cons, as many repair centers reduced working personnel and put more safety measures in place. Several lawsuits have been filed all around the world relating to Joy-Con drift. In July 2019, Chemicals Schwartz Kreiner and Donaldson Smith filed a class action lawsuit. They began collecting reports from players in an effort to show the widespread impact of Joy-Con drift. The complaint was filed in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Washington, Nintendo of America's home state. The law firm said that it's pursuing litigation aggressively in order to get the best outcome for consumers. Over 5,500 Switch owners contacted Kreiner to report they'd been impacted by Joy-Con drift. Despite widespread reports on the issue, Nintendo's response to Joy-Con drift has been lackluster. At the height of the Joy-Con drift outrage, Nintendo responded with the following comment. At Nintendo, we take great pride in creating quality products and we are continuously making improvements to them. We are aware of recent reports that some Joy-Con controllers are not responding correctly. We want our consumers to have fun with Nintendo Switch, and if anything falls short of this goal, we always encourage them to visit support.nintendo.com so we can help. Many took issue with this seemingly non-comment, including Kreiner, who stated that Nintendo's response wouldn't change their stance, and that they'd continue to pursue relief. The court didn't dismiss the case, instead compelling arbitration, which is essentially a lateral shift from the standard judiciary process, but can still result in legally binding compensation. As of researching this video, the law firm is still working to pursue the case through the arbitration process. In Nintendo's defense, they have taken some responsibility. After the lawsuit was filed by Kreiner and Donald and Smith in July 2019, Nintendo began fixing controllers free of charge in certain regions. Vice News reported that Nintendo had an internal memo directing its support team to repair Joy-Cons for free, even if users were no longer under warranty. The typical warranty for most Nintendo products includes 90 days for accessories and 12 months for the consoles, but an additional class action lawsuit was filed in California in October 2020, with a mom and child being the center of that legal battle. The suit demands a jury trial and charges Nintendo with knowingly making and selling new Switches that suffer from the defect that can cause drifting. This lawsuit claims the child has had their Switch repaired several times by Nintendo, on average every three months even if the Joy-Cons were new or freshly repaired by Nintendo themselves. The United States isn't the only place where Nintendo has faced legal battles over the Switch. In May 2019, a French consumer advocacy organization called UFC Coup Choisir called on Nintendo to offer Joy-Con repairs for free. Nintendo changed its policy in France in response. In 2020, the group alleged that Nintendo engaged in practices of planned obsolescence. Nintendo France pushed back against these claims, saying that only 1% of Switch owners in France were impacted, and most of those were repaired. However, this wasn't enough to prevent Nintendo's legal issues in Europe. The European Consumer Organization, or B, EUC represents over 40 different consumer organizations throughout Europe, and they've called for a formal investigation into Joy-Con drift after receiving nearly 25,000 complaints from European consumers. The BEUC told Eurogamer that in 88% of cases, Joy-Cons broke within the first two years of purchase. Despite Nintendo offering repairs in parts of Europe, the BEUC is concerned that Nintendo continues to knowingly sell faulty products to consumers. After it was reported the BEUC was calling for action, the European Commission released a statement saying it may investigate further and coordinate action against Nintendo. A spokesperson for the Commission told Eurogamer, We are preparing a new legislative initiative aiming to provide consumers with better information on product sustainability, including durability and better protection against certain practices, such as early obsolescence. The results of their investigation are definitely something to look out for, as it'll have an impact on the Switch's future. Before we finish talking about Joy-Con drift, we should acknowledge that hardware manufacturing Manufacturing issues are a recurring problem in the video game industry. So let's take a quick look at how Nintendo's competitors, Sony and Microsoft, responded to similar problems. One infamous issue was the Xbox 360's Red Ring of Death, or RROD. Three lights would light up around the console's power button, indicating an internal issue. While an official reason wasn't disclosed, some believe the RROD was caused by the graphics chip overheating. Many users became frustrated when their Xbox 360s just stopped working, and all kinds of quick fixes popped up on Line that claimed to fix the RROD. 
From using coins to wrapping the 360 in towels, players were eager to get their systems back up and running. Microsoft had a somewhat similar response to Nintendo, but they took responsibility much quicker. Shortly after the 360's launch, Microsoft stated that the console's failure rate was within the industry's typical 3 to 5 percent for a new device. But a few months later, then vice president of Microsoft's interactive entertainment business division, Peter Moore, published an open letter on the subject. Moore acknowledged the 360's problems and announced that Microsoft would be extending the warranty of all Xbox 360s that get the RROD to three years. During the same era, the PlayStation 3 also suffered from hardware issues, but Sony didn't seem receptive to the complaints of consumers. The yellow light of death was an issue that impacted many original PS3s. It's usually caused by issues with the motherboard degrading and not being able to provide enough power to the GPU or the CPU, resulting in a yellow light. Since the console can get quite hot at times, these degradations can occur over long use of the PS3. After a report by the BBC spotlighting the yellow light of death, Sony made a statement saying, We entirely refute the suggestion that PS3 consoles have an inherent defect or other design issues. Of all PS3s sold in the UK to date, fewer than one half of 1% of units have been reported as failing in circumstances where the yellow indicator is illuminated. All being said, the yellow light of death wasn't as widespread as the red ring of death, and may well have fallen in an acceptable range of failure for a major consumer product. Now let's take a look at Nintendo. Nintendo's latest response to the drift issue. On July 3, 2020, the president of Nintendo, Shuntaro Furukawa, finally acknowledged the issues affecting Joy-Con controllers. He stated, Regarding the Joy-Con controllers, we apologize for any inconvenience experienced by consumers. We are continuously working to improve our products, but because the Joy-Con controllers are currently subject to a class action lawsuit in the US, I have no information to share about any specific actions we have taken. But as of this video, many fans are still waiting for some kind of relief from Nintendo. Despite the huge success the Switch has brought Nintendo, for some fans, the Joy-Con drift has left a negative impression of the company. Memes about Joy-Con drift continue to be shared as more and more players become frustrated by Nintendo's lackluster response. Did you also know that Nintendo had an arms race with modders over the Nintendo Switch? Or that dedicated modders gave a presentation to warn how the DS could be modded and spread malware? For more facts, check out our videos on Nintendo Switch and Nintendo DS Piracy and Hacking.